Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much for your presence in this place, that anything of darkness, it must leave and get out right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We all have moments, Father, but you set us free, and we thank you and give you praise. Thank you for your prophets, O oh God. It is you and only you who can truly tell us about our tomorrows. And we praise you. We praise you and give you thanks. The best is yet to come. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Well, this is a very special day. It is for me, you all, and I've said it probably five times already. This has been the most special Easter that I've ever got to, to enjoy and, and engage to be there. I don't know what it is that is compelling me to feel that way. Um, I'm excited about what God did, the deepness of his love that brought us into salvation, and how that you all, uh, we, we, we need to know that we were created. Adam was created out of the dust of the earth. And then to give that body life Father blew his spirit into his nostrils, and he became a living person. What makes me concerned about all mankind is this. There are those who just don't want to obey God. They won't do what he says. And, the, and here's the thing about it. God gave us all free will. He hasn't stand in, stood in anybody's way. If there are those who want to be ugly, he'll let them be ugly. He'll let them do it, you all. But what they don't know is that spirit in them is eternal. It will never die. It can't die. It's the spirit of God. God blew into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and that breath will go on forever. <sighs> That's why I pray for him. I mean, I really pray for people who don't know Jesus. I do. Because eternity, there's just, you can't add anything to it or take anything from it. I mean, eternal. And so we pray for them. We pray for them and hope that they get saved. The, the, and, and the mercy of God just reach out, reaches out at us. How many of us know what it was like to be a sinner? <laughs> and got the message one day repented of our sins and received Jesus Christ as our Savior and as our Lord. At the end of this message, we're going to say, if you want to come and renew your walk with God, come up to the altar and renew it with God because things are just going to get gooder and gooder. I couldn't resist. <laughs> it's just going to get better and better, you all. We haven't seen anything yet. Been in this old dark and evil world and did evil. God spared my life when I was out there. Out of his love, he saved me. And from his word, I fell on my knees in repentance. I am so sorry for what I did. 
And God knows the truth of our hearts, whether we're true in our confession or not. We can't get around him. And he knew and knows our hearts like no one else does. Father, I, I don't know what it is that is so exciting about. I, I do. It's exciting to have these days with this level of, of joy. And praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. There's something else, too, you all. Something really good is coming. There may be a, a ditch that we go through, as, as says the prophet, but we're not going to be discouraged. We're not going to think that it's going to take us down. The devil will never, ever take down the Lord, ever. He will bring us through. Whatever God does, he does with purpose. And I, and I don't know what it is, but I will follow him anywhere that he goes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so, Father God sent his son into this world, and his son wanted to do so. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And it's on this day, somewhere in the vicinity of 2,000 years, this is the day that he rose from the dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And <clears throat> he was captured. <laughs> he was captured by the chief priest and the scribes, supposedly the high people in the church, in the temple. And they wanted to kill him. They tried, but they failed. And they came. We had a, one of the 12 uh, disciples, you've heard of him, Judas Iscariot, who for 20 pieces of silver presented Jesus to them in a place where they could take, take him. And there he was at the Garden of Gethsemane. He was praying. And I mean he was praying. His sweat was like drops of blood, what he knew he was going to go through that by the time he got through bearing the sins of mankind, you wouldn't even know he was a man. His body had changed that much. But when the scribes and the Pharisees showed up, and, and here comes Judas, and he gives him a kiss and all of that, and... and <clears throat> They ask him, are you, uh, are you Jesus Christ? And here's what he said. I am. And they all went backwards and fell on the ground. And then he talked to them while they was on the ground. God wanted those supposed high ministerials, <clears throat> that it's not their power that's going to take Jesus to the cross. He's going to give himself for us. He is not going to be under the control of these fallen individuals. But anyhow, we're not going to take you too long. I, we're just going to go through these scriptures. We're going to start... Uh, Jesus is outside of the uh, of the uh, of Gethsemane. In verse twenty-seven, we're going to go to verses twenty-five, and there will be a break, and then we'll go back. Anyhow, here we go. Put yourself in the Lord's place. 
that you were amongst those disciples who really did not understand what Jesus was going through. They really didn't. And I, we just, we have to understand, we can't, you know, say bad things about them because you all, we've done enough weakness in our walk with God ourselves. Amen. Amen. But anyhow, he says, when morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Judas was the one who, <clears throat> who went to, to do that. Well, he didn't expect for him to die, but to let them know who Jesus was. And, and so he did. Then when Judas, his betrayer, Jesus' betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. But it was too late. It was too late. Saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, Judas departed and went and hanged himself. And then in another uh, gospel, we, we see that he, that thing around his neck broke and he fell below amongst the rocks. Verse 6, but the chief priest taking the pieces of silver said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, that money, since it is blood money. You all, it was already blood money. With those fallen, uh, uh, all of these fallen people who were claiming to be holy people, they weren't. Verse 7, so they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer to them. He wasn't going to give them room to do their dance. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. You see, because most of the people that stood before him for such a thing, they were scared. But Jesus wasn't. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he was there. And he did it, praise his name. <clears throat> the crowd chooses Barabbas. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a no notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy, Pilate of no, of all people, Pilate, for he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered Jesus up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. 
God gave her a dream. And in that dream, she saw Jesus, Son of God. And she says to her husband, as she sent someone to give him the message, have nothing to do with that righteous man. For I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to, to them, Which of the two of you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they said, let him be crucified. He was getting in the way of their money. He's getting in the way of their false scriptures. And a lot of that goes on yet today, you all. It hasn't ever stopped. Verse 23, and he said, why? What evil has he done? But... They shouted all the more and said, let him be crucified. Pilate delivers Jesus to be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. And it was going to be. It was going to be. That was going to happen. The amazing prophecy that the scribes and Pharisees could have, should have, let me put it this way, should have read it. Perhaps they did read it, but they're ignoring it. It was in Isaiah 9, 700 years before Jesus was born, he gave a prophecy. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be up on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, hallelujah, Prince of Peace. Their priest, if anyone was to know that, it was them. But they failed it. They would rather do their dirt than, than <clears throat> to do the right thing. Well, praise God. Moving on. As we go into the crucifixion, Zechariah was somewhere in the vicinity of 600 years before Christ, and Father gave him a prophecy concerning how these, these, these priests and scribes, what was going to happen to them after uh, Jesus, at when, after Jesus came the second time. And God said, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you need to read the previous uh, scriptures because it speaks of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay? And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy. These, these, these individuals are crying for mercy because God has already seen it. Time doesn't bother God, you all. He's already seen it. He already knows what's happening tomorrow and the day after and the year after and the month after and the who knows how long. Nothing new with him so that when they look on me and on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him, but it's too late. 
as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him. Too late. He's risen as one weeps over a firstborn. And Jesus Christ was the firstborn of God. Praise his holy name. It is so amazing, you all. <clears throat> when he says the fear of the Lord, fear of the word of God, we really need to pay attention because he's going to do what he says. He's not going to change it. I, I think that's why he puts his word before his own name because he's not going to change it. And, and no one is going <laughs> to, they trying to be forgiven, it's too late. There are those who are going to wait till it's too late. Moving on. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> then Pilate re released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the government took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion <clears throat> before him. And they stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and they put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, <clears throat> before him they mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, which he really was, but they were making fun. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head the Son of God, struck the Son of God on his head. The Son of God Almighty, they did that. And the Lord let them get by. <clears throat> I think <clears throat> one of the things I think as I read Scripture, I'm glad I'm not the Lord because I'd probably, probably do something silly. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to pay the price for that. <laughs> Anyhow. But God in his love. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross because Jesus had been beaten so badly that there was no way he could carry it. It was during that time when his back was split open and with those stripes and the shedding of his blood, we were healed. With his stripes, we were healed. And with all the stuff that's going on in my head these days, I, my mind is healed. My brain is healed. <laughs> And I'm going to read it and read it until it takes root in me. And I'm telling you, probably dance for two weeks before I come back and preach. Verse 33, and when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink. To Jesus, that is, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. <clears throat> then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. They didn't even know about that. You all missed it totally. I'm not, I'll move on. But if you want to find out when that was said, go to Matthew 24 and right around verse 1 and 2. 
If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. He could have, but he loved us too much. He wanted to save us, y'all. He wanted to save people that just really didn't understand that they were spirit beings. They thought that just this body going to the grave, that was the end. Oh, no. There's that moment when that person, whoever it is today, when that whatever happens and they die, they will, as they're coming out of their body, they're going to be looking at their body. And you all, some of them are going to be going up, praise God, and some of them are going to be going down. Read Luke 16, that story about the rich man and the poor man, where they went. It's forever, and God has nothing to do with it. It's the person, do you hear me? They decide. God gives them that decision. Verse 41, so also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked Jesus, saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him. And if he desires him, and if, excuse me, n- deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. So now at the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. All of that darkness was demonic darkness. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's never experienced that before. And some of, <clears throat> some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come save him. Where did they get that? Elijah's not the savior of the world. Jesus Christ is. The Father is. Holy Spirit is. Just look. Take a moment. Look at Jesus, you all. Just look at him. Look at what he is going through to save us. Verse 50, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He came out of his body and went down into the dark place. But it couldn't touch him. It couldn't touch him. He went through both sides of it, that place down below where those who died left their bodies and went down below. Those who were saved went into paradise, but there was a great gulf fixed between paradise and hell. Anyhow, read it, you'll read it. So he yielded up his spirit And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth literally shook, and the rocks were split. And the tombs also were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after, this is after his resurrection, they they left paradise and went to heaven. And they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him 
keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were filled with awe and said, truly, this Okay, the Son of God. (laughs) Oh, Pastor Morris. Verse 55. There were also many women there looking from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. Just the presence of those angels, the anointing of God, again, they hit the ground, just like they did when when they tried to take Jesus. Anyhow, moving on. Verse... For, and for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. And he knew because God sent him with the message. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. It's empty. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly, the ladies, from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him there. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And while they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. They saw it, and when they had assembled When they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient uh, sum of money to those soldiers and said, tell the people that his disciples came by night and stole him away from the tomb while we were asleep. And if he comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. Money. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And the story has been spread among the Jews to this day. (sighs) The Great Commission. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And some of them were headed that direction, not sure that he had risen. I mean, after all, that's the way things were on the natural level, that nobody rises from the dead. But sin could not hold him down. And so, verse 17, when they got there, they watched, they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Speaking at this point 
to his disciples, the 11 of them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. We are of that generation. There's very, I, I believe very strongly that there's going to be some of us who are here will see when Jesus comes out of heaven and, and it's that very last battle uh, there in the tribulation. And... Uh, and just with the fire of his mouth, he, he kills all of those, those evil people. He didn't have to touch them with his hands. We are not very far from that. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said that no man knows the day nor the hour. Only the Father knows. But we are in that generation. And God is preparing those of us who are walking upright with him to use us to share the good news with the lost. Out of our love for them, we share it. and hope that they will receive Jesus Christ. It's amazing, you all. It really is. And if you're saved, you, amen, if you want to jump up and down and shout hallelujah, go ahead, because it's worth it. It really is, you all. I am in this case right here. And I am speaking out of the spirit and soul that God blew into my nostrils. I'll be honest with you. There's some days I would just like to go and be with Jesus. <laughs> but it's not time yet. And I want to finish my course, or his course, let me put it that way. It's his course that he's got set for me, and I want to follow it and fulfill it. We're getting ready to see something. I don't know what it is. I can feel it. I can feel it. I don't know what it is. I think perhaps God doesn't want me to know it because he knows I got a big mouth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 